excitement about it, Al. Say it, Matt killed Henry Clark. Don't say. Do you suppose old Matt did kill him? Wouldn't be surprised. The sheriff's giving him the third degree now. Why don't you make him own up all right? You might as well talk, Matt. What would you do with Clark's body? I didn't do nothing with his body. I never saw him. You can't bluff me, Matt Brandon. The day he disappeared, you were heard threatening to kill him. And I heard him. It was right in front of Miller's store. Can't a man have a little private feud without some pig-headed sheriff sticking his nose in? There, he admits it. I admit nothing. The last I saw of Henry that night, he was headed towards your place. And you killed him, Matt Brandon. Don't yell at me, Barney Riggs. And take your finger out of my face. That tin star of yours don't scare me a bit. Evidence is all again you, Matt. I'm not saying another word. From now on, you can do your talking to my lawyer. Who is it? Now, none of your business, but he's the best gold down lawyer in this state. And when he gets here, he'll make you two buzzards jump sideways. Oh, Matt, what do you want to talk like that for? Why don't you confess and save the county a lot of money? See my lawyer. Effie, pack your things. Oh, but Mr. Drew, what have I done now? What are you firing me for? I'm not firing you, you idiot. You, Nancy, and I are going to the country. Oh, but Mr. Drew, I don't like the country. There's bugs and snakes. I won't go to the country. I'll quit. You'll do nothing of the sort. You've got to go along. Keep house for us. Oh, but Mr. Drew, where are we going? An old friend of mine, Matt Brandon, got himself in jail for murder up at Sylvan Lake. I have to go and get him out. Murder? Yes, murder. But he didn't do it. Matt wouldn't do a thing like that. Come on, come on, hurry up. But Mr. Drew... Oh, yes, and another thing. If Nancy knows I'm going up there on a murder case, she'll get in it some way and end up in trouble. So I don't want her to know the real reason for our trip. You understand? Yes, sir. I won't say a word. Oh, dear. Murder. here, Nancy. Where have you been? The flower exhibit. Dad, you should have been there. It was appalling. I almost won first prize with my Fox Dramondi, but I didn't because I was second. Helen Eagle's calendulas were first. If you ask me, it was all political for, but... Dad, what in the world? Get your things together, honey. We're going on a vacation. Uh, a vacation? That's right, Nancy. <laughs> Gee, I didn't know that thing was loaded. Well, don't stand there, Effie. Go and find my fishing rod. I, I think it's in the basement. Yes, Mr. Drew. You remember old Matt Brandon, don't you? Matt Brandon. Uncle Matt, gee, yes. Well, he's invited us up to his farm near Sylvan Lake. Are we going to be gone long? Maybe all summer. Simple life, back to nature. That's us, Nancy. Up with the lark and to bed with the chickens. Think of it. I'll wear old clothes, grow a beard a foot long, and do nothing but fish and uh, hunt. Dad, what's come over you? You haven't gone fishing in years. You've never been an outdoor man. Look here, young woman. I'll have you know the outdoors is in my blood. My ancestors were pioneers. Uh, I'll turn that out a little bit. You want to go to Sylvan Lake, don't you? Ted Nickerson's up there with his folks. I thought the idea would appeal to you. He'll probably think I deliberately followed him. It'll be very embarrassing. Oh, nonsense. Besides, there's something funny about all this. What's so funny about taking a vacation? What am I supposed to do, work all my life? Well, no, Dad, I couldn't find your fishing rod, Mr. Pohl. Mr. Drew. No, I didn't think you could. Never mind, I'll find it myself. You two get packed. Remember now. Effie, are you sure we're going on just a vacation? Why, certainly, Miss Nancy. Well, then, we won't be needing this. Oh, but I think your father wants to take it. Of course he doesn't if we're going on a vacation. Lock it up somewhere. Oh, Miss Nancy, I couldn't do that. Then I'll do it. I'll hide it where he can't find it. Oh, but I think your father wants to work just a little. Oh, that's silly. Uncle Matt wouldn't get in time. Oh, but it was Mr. Brandon. I mean, Uncle Matt's in trouble. Yes, no, no, he isn't. 
Effie, you're fibbing. No, honest, Miss Nancy. If Dad's taking his briefcase, that shows it's business. What did Uncle Matt do? Oh, he didn't do anything. He's innocent. Innocent of what? Uh, nothing. If he's innocent of nothing, he's guilty of something. Oh, no, honest. Uh, your father said he wasn't the type to hurt anybody. He's being sued for assault and battery. No, no. Why not? Because the man's dead. Uh, then it's murder. Yes. Uh, Effie. Mr. Drew, she wormed it out of me. You know I can't match wits with her. Effie, get my bags. Well, don't stand there, Dad. If Uncle Matt's in a jam, I've got to save him. You've got to save him. Certainly. Oh, of course, I may need your help. Come on, Effie. Oh, Mr. Drew, I'm so sorry. I just feel as if you ought to kick me. <gasps> Mr. Drew. Well, here we are. Effie, hand me some of that stuff. Nancy, got for that gun now. Work here? Yes. My name's Carson Drew. How do you do, sir? My name's Apollo Johnson. Very pretty name, Apollo. Yes, I think so. <laughs> Apollo, what a character. Yeah, you'll be a great help. Look at this place. It's a mess. No window curtains. People can peek in. Maybe Uncle Matt's having them clean. Hmm. Well, what are you laughing at? Give me a hand. <laughs> I don't think we'll stay here. Oh, Dad, let. It's very picturesque. Picturesque my foot. Besides, it's too far from the lake. But, Dad, please, it's so homelike and rustic and things. Why, it'll take at least a week to make the place livable. There isn't even any linen. Well, that settles it. We'll drive over to the village and get some rooms in the lodge. Apollo, haven't you hung those curtains up yet? Yes. I I'll do it right now. Why are you acting so peculiar? I, I guess I just got that old peculiar feeling, that's all. You're uh, Carson Drew, I presume. Yes. Yes. Yes, I'm Carson Drew. I'm Edna Gregory. I live next door. Mr. Brandon asked me to meet you, but I didn't expect you so soon. Well, that's soon. quite all right, but... Oh, do be careful. <laughs> oh, Apollo, you can start hanging the curtains now. I'll help you in a minute. Oh, uh, I wouldn't bother. Uh, you see, we're not going to stay. Why, Nancy, what made you say that? Well, Dad, you Oh, said... Miss Gregory, this is my little girl, Nancy. How do you do, Nancy? How do you do? The house can be put in order right away, Mr. Drew. Oh, but we don't think that it's quite suited to our needs. Nonsense. I think it's a lovely little cottage. I was just remarking before you came in how rustic and homelike the place is, and how uh, picturesque. I think we're going to be very happy here. All right, Effie, you can start unpacking. Oh, I'll get that for you. Oh, thank you. But, Dad, it's... The house is so far from the lake. No, it's not far at all. Children always like to be where they can play in water. Children? Play in the water? Dad. Yes, well, I guess I'd better go down and have a talk with old Matt and get some of the details. He was so mad, his letter was rather incoherent. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. Murder. Well, who is this neighbor that Matt was supposed to have done away with? Henry Clark. He and Clint Griffith have a farm just back of Mr. Brandon's. Well, why are they so certain that Matt killed him? Oh, Henry and Matt have been quarreling over the boundaries between their places for as long as anyone can remember. Mm -hmm. And then one day, about a month ago, Henry disappeared. Disappeared? I think the Hans done took him away. Oh, Apollo. What's all this about Hans? I saw two ghosts one night. One was a tall ghost, and one was a short ghost. And one of them exploded. <laughs> There's no such thing as ghosts, Apollo. Never mind the curtains, Apollo. Go burn that rubbish you piled up on the front porch. Yes, sir. And then they found out that Matt had been threatening Clark on that very same day. Well, they can't hold him for that. They're doing it. 
That sheriff, Barney Riggs, is nothing but a stubborn old fool. Well, I can promise you, Miss Gregory, that I'll be back in an hour and have Matt Brandon with me. Oh, I hope you're right. Oh, uh, will you still be here? Probably. Well, I'll hurry then. Oh, Nancy, dear, do you want to come along? I'd rather go than stay here. Oh, uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, it's all right. Well. Hello, Barney. Hello, Clint. Well, I've just come from the county seat. The prosecutor's coming in a day or two, and he's going to take charge of the case. And I'll be willing to bet that it'll be the swiftest conviction that he ever had. Guess we ought to tell that to Matt. Maybe it'll cool him down. I take it you're the sheriff? Yeah. What's on your mind? I want to see Matt Brandon. Come back during visiting hours. I'm his attorney, Carson Drew. And you know, Sheriff, you have no right to deny a prisoner the privilege of seeing his lawyer. Well, I guess you're within your rights. You stay out here. I'm his secretary. Drew and Hello, Nancy. Matt. Hello, Uncle Matt. Well, Matt, they finally caught up with you, huh? Caught up with me? Huh. Drew, will you see if you can talk some sense into this flat-headed limb of the law? Get up a citizen committee. Have him thrown out of office. Take it easy, Matt. I'll get you out of here. Nobody's going to get nobody out of here. Don't let him bluff you, Sheriff. Everything shows that Matt Brandon killed my partner, and he's going to pay for it. Shut up, Clint. My attorney's got the floor. You're Clint Griffith? Yes. The complaint? Yes. Well, Sheriff, I suppose you found the body of Henry Clark, haven't you? No. No? Then you have no right to hold him. You can't even make an accusation until you prove corpus delicti. You know what corpus delicti is, don't you? Sure. Sure I do. It's, uh... My gracious, every sheriff should know that. Well, you're so fresh. What is it? Who? Oh, corpus delicti is... is the body of the crime. Proof that the crime's been committed. Isn't it, Dad? That's right, Nancy. In this case, the body of Henry Clark. You have heard of a writ of habeas corpus, haven't you, Sheriff? Yeah, but no smart lawyer is going to pull one of them things on me. That's showing him, Drew. How do you like it now, Barney? You ain't going to let him go, Sheriff. I got to do it now, Clint. <laughs> I still think you've got my partner. And we ain't going to stop till we prove it. I'll bet Hank Clark will turn up more alive than you've ever been, Barney. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if that old cutthroat didn't let himself be seen crossing my land and then disappear just to get me into trouble. He'd figure as how you'd be fool enough to fall for it. Come on, folks. <coughs> Uncle Matt, we ought to have a dinner party to celebrate your being home. Now, there's an idea that appeals to me. And Ken Effie Cook, where do you taste that food, Matt? Now, why don't you drive my truck back to the house for me, Nancy? Mm. I want to have a little talk with your dad. Truck? Oh, station wagon swell. Dad, will you get the groceries? I want to ask Ted to come. He won't think you're following him, will he? Oh, well, if it's embarrassing, you tell him I invited him. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> you think Miss Gregory would like to have dinner with us, too? Why not? Good. What are you doing up here? Dad and I came up to get Mr. Brandon out of jail. We did it, too. I heard about him. Uh, how long are you going to stay? Until we're sure there won't be any more trouble, I guess. I bet you're surprised to see me. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Well, uh, I'll drop over and see you sometime. What are you building? A boat. What for? What for? What do you usually do with a boat? Put it in the parlor? Why, the roller skates. So I can slide it into the water. Oh, I did. I think that's very clever of you. Yeah. Well, so long, Nancy. Nice seeing you. Oh, I almost forgot. Here. What's this? Open it and see. OK. 
gosh. Gee, that, that's swell, Nancy. Well, uh, it, it doesn't run. Oh, oh, it stops once in a while. All you have to do is tap it like this. Hey, listen, if that's tapping, I'd hate to have you suck me on the jaw. Well, it's running now, but gosh, you shouldn't have done it. Oh, it only cost a nickel. A nickel? Uh-huh. I want it on a punch board, and being a man's watch, I thought maybe you'd like it. Gosh. Thanks. Oh, by the way, Ted, I have a very important favor to ask of you, if you don't mind. I get it. I've been bribed. All right. If you're not interested in my terrible problem. Huh? Uh, hey, hey, wait a minute. Yes, Ted? What do you mean, terrible problem? Oh, it's just a family matter. You wouldn't be interested. Okay, out with it. It's my father. What about him? He's a fine, good man, and brilliant, too. Who said he wasn't? Nobody. But there's a terrible woman, a scheming adventuress who has designs on him. Why, she's positively a siren. No fooling. Who? She lives down the road from us. The way she made eyes at Dad. Why, she had him grinning like a Cheshire cat before they'd hardly met. Gosh, that is sort of serious. What are you going to do about it? I'm not sure yet. But she'll be there for dinner tonight. And I want you to come and see for yourself. I only hope you figure out some way to bring Dad to his senses. Well, now, I don't know. Is, uh... Okay, but I got a premonition, Nancy. I got a premonition. out picking wildflowers and stopped to admire some poison ivy. Oh, oh, Effie, I'm sorry. I knew this would happen if I came to the country. As far as I'm concerned, they can give it back to the Indians if they'll take it. There, there now. In a day or two, you'll be all right again. Thank you, Mr. Brandon. Oh! <laughs> well, it looks like we'll have to call off our little dinner party. Edna Gregory is a good cook. Maybe she'd help out. You suppose we should ask her? I should say not. I can cook as well as she can. I'll fix the dinner, and it'll be a banquet like you've never seen before. I didn't study domestic science for nothing. <laughs> What are you doing with the potatoes on the floor? I put them there. We always cook our potatoes on the floor. Oh. Ouch. Where's Effie? She's in bed with poison ivy. Oh, my gosh. I have to cook the dinner. Only everything's gone wrong. The stove gets too hot and things burn, and, and then it gets too cold, and things won't cook at all, and oh. Here, you'll have to help. What do I do with them? Wash them off and set them back in the stove. Nobody but you'll ever know they've been on the floor. Oh, all right. That Gregory woman isn't here yet, is she? Nope. What's Dad doing? Talking to Mr. Brandon. Is he all dressed up? Yeah, he is. He looks pretty doggy, too. And he's watching the door, I'll bet. Yeah. Come to think of it, he is. There. Now see what I mean? Yeah. 
Ted, stop eating those strawberries. There won't be enough for dinner. Okay, okay. Oh. Now look what you've done. You've ruined my biscuits. I've ruined your biscuits? Well, holy cats, I didn't even touch them. Oh, if you hadn't gone to... Good evening, Nancy. Uh, oh, Miss Gregory. Uh, this cake was meant to be a surprise. I didn't expect to find any of the family in the kitchen. Effie has poison ivy. So you're the cook. I didn't know young girls could cook these days. I'm Ted Nickerson, Miss Gregory. I'm glad to know you, Ted. Same here. Well, well, I have to finish the dinner. Tell you what let's do. Let's cook it together. I'm really getting along fine. Certainly you are. But it's a lot of work for one person, cooking for so many people. Especially on a wood stove, when you're used to a gas range. Oh, the damper's open too far. All the heat goes up the chimney. For gosh sakes, what are the salads doing on the stove? Oh, I forgot! Never mind, Nancy. We can make some more. Oh, here you are, Nancy. Ted, I won't need you anymore. Oh, I don't mind. Nancy, I believe these string beans could stand a little more salt. Do you know where it is? <laughs> Nothing like having things handy. Yes, indeed. Ted, you better go in with the others and tell Dad I want to see him. Okay. But you got to give Clint Griffith credit for being smart, though. It was his idea about buying an airplane and going into the crop dusting business. He's made a lot of money out of it. Well, <clears throat> he doesn't fly the plane himself, does he? No, he's got a pilot, a fellow named Chuck Marley. Uh, Mr. Drew, Nancy wants to see you. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm busy just now, Ted. Miss Gregory's out there, too. She is? Uh, uh, excuse me, Matt, please. You mean you actually made that with your own hands? I certainly. I was going to have strawberry shortcake. No, 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 this is much better. We'll have the strawberries plain. I like them that way, too. Is there anything I can do, Miss Gregory? Well, I need the salad dressing. I'll find it. It's on the stove. Thank you, Nancy. Here you are, Miss Gregory. Oh, thank you, Ted. Now for a big spoon. Excuse me. Here it is. Thank you, Ted. Miss Gregory and I can finish the dinner. You children run out and play. Play? Uh, perhaps you could find some watercress. It would help the salad. Yes, yes, of course it would. Um, go ahead, go ahead. Walk will do you good. Improve your appetite. More raisins? Come on, Ted. Huh? Hey, we haven't any time to pick posies. We gotta hurry with this watercress before it wills. I hope the whole salad wills. Oh, are you gonna start that again? And I was depending upon you to stand up with me against that Gregory person. Why, you acted as silly as you did the first time you met me. Forget it, will you? Ted, look. Well, who cares? The woods are full of them. Not like this one. Do you know what it is? Yeah, it's a flower. Oh, Ted, don't be so materialistic. It's an arbensis, a rare tropical plant. I learned about it in botany class. It has no business growing here. Then pull it up. I should say not. I'm going to take it home and put it in a pot. Oh, for gosh sakes. I wonder how it got here. I'll find something to carry it in while you dig it up. What with? Oh, I never thought of that. Well, never mind. I'll put a marker on it and send a power over for it later. Oh. Give me your handkerchief. Oh, Here it is. Make it snappy, will you? We gotta get back. I don't care if we never get back. I found a strange looking flower down there in the field. Will you take a spade and dig it up for me? I marked it with a handkerchief on a stick so it'll be easy to find. Yes. What's the matter with you, Apollo? Uh, I guess I'll just bone jitterbug, Miss Drew. Oh. Well, be careful of its roots. It's a very rare plant. Yes. You want it right away? I 
get it pretty soon. A cow might eat it. No rush. I'd eat the chicken first. I wonder how he know about that. It's the best meal I've had in 40 years. <laughs> well, allow me, Miss Gregory, to say it's the best meal I ever had. Me too. Thank you, but the credit really belongs to Nancy. Oh, she only fixed the strawberries. Oh, uh, Nancy, aren't you eating your cake? I don't like white cake. More coffee, Miss Gregory? Oh, yes, please. How about some cream, Miss Gregory? Oh, thank you, Ted. Sugar? Yes, please. Nancy, pass the sugar. Sugar, Nancy. This is the salt. Oh, excuse me. Work. Nothing but work. Everybody wants me to work. Some of these days, I'm going to get a million dollars. Maybe two million. Maybe three million. Then I ain't going to never have to work. Maybe. Apollo and talk sense. Well, Miss Shaft is there. A body buried in the ground. I'm Where? telling you. Down around on the back end of Mr. Brandon's farm. I'm Are telling you. Are you kidding me? Oh, no, sir. I wouldn't kid you about it. I saw it with my own eyes. Now, listen, Apollo. You're so excited you don't know what you're talking about. Was it the corpse? A dead corpse. Who? I, I don't know. I took one peep and flew. We'd better check on this, Mills. Shall I call the doctor? Yes. And you come with me and show us the place. Oh, no, sir. Oh, come on. Get going now. Get it, Uncle Matt. Matt Brandon here. You murderer. I knew all along. You killed Harry. Hey, stop that of you. He'll get what's coming to him. Keep back, friend. I'll handle this. You're under arrest, Matt, for the murder of Henry Clark. We just found his body buried over on that South 40 of yours. You're crazy. Am I? How about it, Milt? It was Henry, all right. Apollo here found him. Mr. Brandt, I didn't mean to get you into no trouble. I was digging up a flower for Miss Drew, and there he was. Shot to death. And you did it, Matt Brandon. That still has to be proved. Oh, you're being silly, all of you. Sheriff Briggs, Uncle Matt wouldn't hurt a fly. Nancy, we've got your corpus delicti now, Mr. Drew. And right on his own land. Don't put those on me. I take it easy. There's no use resisting, Matt. I'll start work on this right away. Barney, if you're still sheriff after next election, it won't be on my vote. Matt, the way I figure, you won't have any vote next election. Poor Mr. Brandon. Here, here. Where do you think you're going? I don't know, but something has to be done right away. Well, we can't do anything tonight. It's too late. Dad, it's all my fault. Uncle Matt would never have been arrested again if I hadn't found that plan. Now, Nancy, you mustn't blame yourself for that. Besides, clearing Uncle Matt is my job. Murder case is nothing for a little girl to get mixed up in. And I want you to promise that you'll keep out of it. All right, Dad. I promise. Dad says that in every crime, the criminal always makes at least one mistake. Ted, you haven't heard one word I said. Good morning, Nancy. Hello, Ted. Hello. Uh, uh, hello, Miss Gregory. Ted, will you please tell my father Miss Gregory is here? Sure. I'll tell him. Nancy, the Lady Aid's giving an ice cream social tonight, and we'd like you to come with us. Oh, I don't know. I'll, I'll see if it can be arranged. Why don't you bring your boyfriend? Your father's going with me. Oh, well, I... Carson. Morning, Edna. Lovely, lovely morning, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, Nancy, uh, we're going down to see Uncle Matt. I thought you were just going to wear old clothes while you were up here and let your beard grow. Whatever made you think of that, Nancy? Now, how would I have any dignity or weight as an attorney if I went around dressed like a tramp? 
Children get the funniest ideas. Are you looking forward to the party tonight? Am I? Well, I'm afraid I'm rather short of clothes for a social function. How about coming with me and pick out a new outfit? Oh, I'd love to, Carson. Well, did you hear that? Now she's even buying his clothes. And they're calling each other by their first names. Oh, what about it? What about it? Well, Dad's falling for her, that's what about it. I don't blame him. She's a darn good cook. All right, Ted Nickerson, if you're going to be a traitor. Well, for gosh sakes, what's the matter with her? I'll bet you 2380 she's after Dad. And I don't like it. Don't be a goop. I'm not a goop. If it wasn't for this case, I'd make Dad pack up and go home. And believe me, as soon as Uncle Matt's free, we will go home. Well, I hope so. Why, Ted. Now, look, Nancy G. I I've been loafing around here all morning, and for what? I gotta get going if I expect to get that boat launched. Well, there's a clue around here somewhere, and I'm gonna sit right here till I figure out what it is. You better get a good supply of pillows. Well, so long. Bye. has a greenhouse? No, I don't, Miss Drew. Most folks I know prefers white houses. Oh, I don't mean that. I mean a nursery, a hothouse, where they raise plants. Oh, that? There's one in town, I think. Thanks, Apollo. Ted, did you hear that? Come on, we're going, please. Hey, wait! Seeing as how I'm invited along, you might at least let me in on it. Ted, I figured out a way to trace Mr. Clark's murderer. You have? Uh-huh. Ted, that plant's the clue. What plant? That flower I sent Apollo to get. Just didn't grow without a seed. And being so rare, it couldn't have gotten there without being planted. Now, look. Will you cut the bubblegum talk and give? Well, it's very simple. That arbensis wasn't more than four weeks old. And Mr. Clark was killed about a month ago. Uh -huh. So that flower had to have been planted about the same time. Yeah. The only person who could have possibly carried that seed there was the murderer. It must have accidentally dropped from his clothes while he was digging. Yeah, I see what you mean. So our job is to find someone around here who raises our benses. Say, for, for a crackpot idea, you may have hit something. I certainly have. Who's a crackpot? Look out! You're asking me who's a crackpot. Are you sure you don't sell our Benza seeds? Of course I'm sure. Well, maybe you know somebody who raises them. No, the fact is I've never heard of our Benzas. Well, it, it, it's a sort of a rare tropical flower that... And it's very important that we find out. Well, say, Clint Griffith raises a lot of rare plants. Maybe he could help you out, huh? Oh. Well, there he is now. Well, uh, thanks a lot. Come on, Ted. Well, aren't you going to wait? No, we're in a hurry. Hello. There doesn't seem to be anybody here. Well, that's fine. It gives us a much better chance to look around. doing? Bugs. What? Spraying with chemicals to kill bugs. Oh. That must be Mr. Griffith's plane. Say, he's coming in. Wait a minute. Now let me do the talking. Hello. Hello. You're Chuck Marley, aren't you? Yeah. Pretty neat job. We're looking for Mr. Griffith. Uh, he's not here. Careful, look her over. We want to know... Are you a flyer? No. But I've read all about how to do it. I understand that Mr. Griffith raises rare plants. What does she rev up to? I'm a student of horticulture, Mr. Marley, and I've been specializing in tropical flora. I'd just love to see Mr. Griffith's flowers. Do you suppose he'd mind? No, not as far as I'm concerned. Greenhouse is right over there. Thanks a lot. Come on, Ted. Sure like to go off with you sometime, Mr. Marley. Oh, Ted, aren't they beautiful? Stick to the point. All right. Look for an arbensis. 
What if they find one? Mr. Griffith will have a lot of explaining to do. kids. In the greenhouse, looking at the flowers. You sap. They're trying to find an Albensis. What are you kids doing here? Oh, 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 nothing. We were just looking at your flowers. Darling Ted. Why do you want to see the flowers? Well, I, I'll, I'll tell you, Mr. Griffith. We were looking for a thornless scrap with all about the size of a flume, gay, growing in a gilded scratch pot that had been roped. Have you had any? Why? Well, if the humus and the gable off were thicker on the pronti, it would be better on the side of the poor fabulous. and that, that's the only way to do it. Hey, girl. Come here. Yes, sir? If there's any particular plant you're interested in, I'll tell you if I have it. Oh, oh now, let's see. Do you have any arbensis plants? No, I haven't. Why? Well, the truth is, Mr. Griffith, I... I have an aunt who used to live in the South Seas, and she gets so seasick... I mean, homesick for tropical flowers. And she's just crazy to find an arbensis. I don't raise arbensis. I don't know anything about them. Oh, but, but I... I thought... haven't time to talk about it. Now, you kids get out of here. Well, if you find anybody with the snozzle pop of the flugel sloop or the wilden phlegm, why, well, tell me, will you please? Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Griffith. Thanks a lot. Charming. Hmm? Hey, what's it all about, Clint? An arbensis plant happened to be the cause of Henry Clark being found. I saw it lying in the field there last night, but I, I didn't think anybody would connect it up with anything. Well, mistakes like that could hang a couple of guys, Clint. But I know I was dropping a seed. Here, get rid of this stuff. Burn it. Wait a minute. What happened to that seed kettle? It was here a minute ago. Well, I didn't see it. That do girl must have it. Here, I'll take care of this stuff. You take after those kids. Find out what they're up to. You go down there and get yourself in a jam, and what have you got to show for it? This. Look in that catalog and see if there's an Arbensis listed. Yeah. Here it is. Let's see. Look out! <sighs> Can't you ever keep your hands on that wheel? That's it, Ted. That's exactly like the one I found. I'm going to wire that company and find out if they sold any Arbenza seeds to someone around Sylvan Lake. my boat built. I could have had it launched. I could have been sailing and by this time I could have caught a mess of fish. I could have even have eaten them. Here's your answer, Miss Drew. Oh, thank you. 63 cents collect. Pay the man, Ted. Pay the man? I'll pay you back. Now listen, you owe me a dollar eighty-nine already. So it's two fifty something. What's two fifty in a case of emergency? Well, it's still two fifty. I'm going to give you some advice, mister. If you want to get rich, stay away from women. I know from experience. Hey! Look at this, Ted. If they sent any of those arbences to this place, I wouldn't know about it. But the company says in the telegram that... I understand, Miss Drew, but the man who used to own this place sold out a couple of weeks ago and went to California. Didn't he keep any record of sales? Of course he must have. Oh, uh, that box there is full of his sales slips and all records. You got a hammer? Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey, leave that alone. Leave it alone? Aren't you going to let us open it? Not without the boss being here. Where is your boss? Oh, he's out of town today, but he'll be back the first thing in the morning. You understand it's important that we find out about those seeds. Oh, I know, but there's nothing I can do about it. If 
you'll drop back tomorrow, I imagine Mr. Timmons will help you out. I see. Dad, can't you make him open it? I can't make him open it, Nancy, without a court order. I think it'll be quicker to wait for Mr. Timmons. Oh. But we'll be sitting on the doorstep of this nursery at dawn. Thanks, sir. All right. He ought to close up any minute now. Yeah. Thanks to Mrs. Ring and her ice cream party, it ought to be a cinch. My, it's a beautiful night. Just look at the stars. They're like bright nails sticking through the floor of heaven. A scientist once fried an egg by the heat of a star. How can you associate a lovely thing like a star with a fried egg? That old couple over there. Isn't that sweet? Still holding hands in the eve of life. I bet they have a lot of wonderful memories. I expect they have. <laughs> oh, it's Dad and her. Of all the ridiculous things, holding hands at their age. I need some punch. Since I'm not a lawyer and you are, I don't think I should argue the case, do you? Gosh, no, I don't know what to say. Really, Carson, it would be marvelous. But there are certain things to be considered. For instance? Nancy. Mm, yes. She doesn't like me. Nonsense. I'm going to have a talk with her right away. Excuse me. I wouldn't. You don't know the old Drew spirit. like the spider and the fly, and Dad's caught in her web. Well, if it was my father, I'd want him to marry her. Marry her? Ted, how can you suggest such a thing? If he marries her, I, I won't stay in the same house. I'll run away. That's what I'll do. On second thought, and I, I think you're right. They'll burn. Come on! There's evidence in that building that'll save Matt Brandon. It'll burn. Are you folks going to stay back or are you? I'm afraid it's too late, Nancy. It can't be too late. Ted, can't you think of something? Well, I... Why, they won't be able to put out that fire with buckets in a hundred years. Oh, it did say to have a fire department. They lost a regular slow. fire department. Look at that blade. blade. Hey, cut it out. Who are you shoving for? I'm you? shoving you. You stay back there. Oh, don't be so officious. I'm a taxpayer. You can't shove me around. I'm not sure whether you paid your taxes or not. You can't shove me around. Hey, stop that crazy thing. Hey, all of you see that. You can't get it. That boy! You can't do anything. Get you back. can't let that boy Get go back there. there. We can't let him get out of that box. I'll get him. Hey, Marley, come back here! Help me! You gotta get out of here! There isn't time. Do you want to burn? Oh. Nice work, Marley. Marley, 
Hey, you're all right, Carol. Right, Ted. Ted, Ted, are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. I almost had that box out of there. Then Mr. Marley came in. Well, sorry, kid. Had to do it. Oh, it's a lucky thing you did. Dad! Get our records! Oh, All our work for nothing! There, there, there. Nancy, we'll get you. I'm sorry, Nancy. Well, Nancy, there's still a chance, even though it is kind of a slim one. What is it, Dad? Well, I sent the bullet that killed Henry Clark to a ballistics expert. He tells me it was fired from a 22 Hartley pistol. If I could find that gun, I could trace the owner. Well, Dad, maybe we can find it. What do you think, Ted? There's a swell coals to roast a hot dog on. <laughs> I'll try and find it, Dad. No, no, Nancy, you've done enough. I'm going to send to the city for a couple of detectives. If anybody can find the gun, they can. Ted, you take Nancy home. Ed and I'll walk by and pick up my car. And be sure you take her straight home. Sure, Mr. Drew. Ted, get in. If you can wake up enough. Now, hmm? oh. no, maybe I can take it easy. I'll get a good night's sleep. Tomorrow, I'll start to work on my boat again. Boy, am I glad this case is out of your hands. What do you mean, out of my hands? Ted, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if someone set that fire tonight just to destroy those records. Say. Maybe Marley wasn't trying to save me. Maybe, maybe he just wanted to make sure that box would burn. He works for Clint Griffith. You know, Ted, everything keeps pointing to them. Yeah. This isn't the road to the lake. I know it. Now, Nancy, your dad said Ted, that... there are times when parents must be disobeyed. Much as it hurts. Oh. You certainly got a mania for dragging people out of bed. Yes, and Miss Me. Put your own, Miss Drew. Apollo, the other day you were telling about some ghosts you once saw. Remember? You said one of them disappeared. He certainly did. That was a short ghost. He vanished. Just vanished in the ground. Gosh. What happened then? Then I vanished. Well, where did all this happen? Up by Mr. Griffin's place. In fact, right in the doorway of Mr. Griffin's barn. Apollo, get dressed. Yes. You're not going up there tonight. We certainly are. Uh-oh. Putty, that's what I am. Just putty. Anybody can talk me into anything. Shh, do you want to wake up everybody? <laughs> What's that? Nothing. It's only a dog. Everybody's scared but me. Now, Apollo, show me just what you saw. Looks awful black in there. Maybe one of them's still around. Oh, Apollo, everybody knows there aren't any ghosts. Uh-uh, not everybody. Ted, you go in and show them it's all right. Who, me? Or do you believe in ghosts, too? Why, no, certainly not. Go ahead, then. Now, go ahead, Apollo. Well, I was taking a shortcut home through the field, and I looked over there, and there was a tall ghost, and he was floating towards the barn. And then there was an explosion. Then there was another explosion, and the short ghost disappeared. Apollo, could those explosions have been gunshots? I don't know. Maybe. What you saw was the murder of Mr. Clark. Uh-oh. He didn't explode and disappear. He was shot and fell to the ground. Oh. Where was the short ghost standing, Apollo? Well, over here was the tall ghost standing here. And through that door comes... <gasps> Mr. Griffith, this, this is Barney Riggs' deputy. 
The sheriff wants you and Mr. Marley to come down and see him this morning. Yeah, yeah, you better come right away. It's very important. Huh? Chuck Marley's out on a crop dusting job. What'll I do? But tell him to come anyway. Okay. Mr. Griffith, the sheriff says he wants you to come down anyway. Uh, yeah. He'll be there. Swell. Well, I only hope you know what you're doing, because I don't. There's no danger. It'll take him at least 20 minutes to get to town and back. Go on, open the gate. Okay. Well, turn her around. What for? A wise general always leaves the road open for a treat. Don't you know that? You know, we're probably barking up the wrong tree again, don't you? Not if that tall ghost Apollo saw is Clint Griffith. You don't expect to find that gun in here, do you? I'm not sure, but there's something I do expect to find. That bullet. What bullet? Well, Apollo said that there were two shots fired. Mm -hmm. So the first one must have missed. If he was telling the truth about that ghost standing there in the doorway, bullets should be about, well, about here. No, I didn't want to see it. You boys called Griffith? Clint, if today was April the 1st, I'd say some of the boys was playing jokes on you. Maybe they are anyway. I mean, gosh. Did you find it? Yeah. Oh, leave it alone. It's much better than it's in there. Ted, this proves it. Mr. Clark was shot here and then carried over to Uncle Matt's place in Barry. So it looked like he did it if the body was found. Yeah. Well, let's get out of here. I'm getting nervous. We might as well look for the gun while we're at it. Oh, they wouldn't leave it in my barn. But why not? They'd be smart enough to get rid of it and... This is a swell place to hide it. Yeah, but Griffith might come back. What time is it? 11 o'clock. Oh, we've still got 10 minutes. If we don't waste our time talking about it, we can do a lot in 10 minutes. <laughs> Stop playing around with those robes. Playing? Gosh sakes, get me out of this. Head. Serves you right for fooling around. Too hardly, all right. There's the serial number. It's all the evidence we need. Hide it quick. Throw it in the halo. What are you kids up to?
Give me that gun. What gun? The one you dug out of there. We haven't got it. Where is it? Tell me! We don't know where it is. Honest. All right. If you won't tell me, maybe I can fix it so you won't tell anyone. I was sure that was going to fall any minute. So was I. So get that plane back here as fast as you can. And Molly, be sure that it looks like an accident. Oh, Nancy, we couldn't break out of this place in a year. There's only one chance left. I told Apollo that if we didn't get back soon, to tell Miss Gregory where we'd gone. Well, Ted, Ted, you didn't. Yeah, but you probably forgot it. Well, they'd have been here by this time. Ted, Ted, that gun. Yeah. If it's loaded, we could... Oh, no such luck. Well, hang on to it anyway. It's important evidence. Okay. Ted, there must be some way of getting out of here. Yeah. Say, I've got it. Why couldn't we send a smoke signal? Of course we could. Sh sure. Nancy, give me that tray. You got a match? No. Haven't you? No, now there's another good idea shot. Nancy, you ought to carry those things. doing that for? Well, maybe I can attract attention with my scarf. It's red, and red can be seen a long ways off. Oh, that's silly. Nobody would pay any attention to that, even if they did see it. <laughs> you can waggle that until you're green in the face for all the good it'll do. Well, here, you'll waggle it a while. You're stronger than I am. Make it sort of frantic. <laughs> Wasting our time on a sluggy idea like this. But we have to do something. Get over that plane. Sis, they ain't got back yet. You all supposed to go and fish them.
Well, there's your accident. Can't fly in a forest. We'd better go in town and report it right away. It's a good thing you're here. I'm sorry, but we brought bad news. Your daughter and that boyfriend of hers stole my plane. They crashed in the woods. Nancy and Ted wouldn't steal your plane. But I saw them. What have you done with them? I haven't done anything with them. They crashed, I said. They went into a dive. From the way they were going, they didn't have a chance. What do you think I'm doing? Lock him up, boys. Now no, look here, Barney. Come on, Clint, and I'll go be busy. What are you flying so low for? We can't stay up here forever. We gotta land sometime. Poor baby. Ted. Ted, she Daddy. isn't. Scaring the wits out of me, flying around the country in strange airplanes. Airplanes. Ted, give me a hand, will you? Sure, Mr. Drew. I... And about that time, Henry found out that Clint and Marley were systematically robbing him. And he was going to turn them in. So Marley talked Clint into shooting him. I, uh, I guess I made a fool of myself, Matt. You're born that way, Barney. But I'll vote for you. <laughs> Here's Dad. Hiya, folks. He's all set for the launching. Hello. My, you look nice, Miss Gregory. Thank you, Nancy. You're a picture yourself. Isn't that the most beautiful boat you've ever seen, Dad? I bet Ted could enter it in a yacht race and win the Davis Cup. The America's Cup, Nancy. You should know that. Davis Cup is for golf. Or is it tennis? Oh. Hi, Skipper. Well, guess we're all set to shove off. Here you are, Nancy. Do your stuff. What do I christen it? Oh, Ted, how sweet. Oh, uh, Buster on the nose. I christen thee Nancy. Come on, Nancy. Make way for a sailor. <laughs> Join the Navy! 
I might have known I'd get into grief naming it after you. Oh! 